understand the unique dynamics that contribute to the transmission and spread of this disease in our region. With vast expanses of dense forests, teeming with wildlife, including rodents, monkeys, and other small mammals, Africa serves as an ideal habitat for the natural host of the monkeypox virus as well. Human interaction with these animals, whether through hunting, bushmeat consumption, or deforestation, increases the risk of zoonotic transmission to humans. So, taking further any time, I would like to hand over the session to you, sir, for the talk. Over to you, sir. Kindly proceed with your talk. Thank you, Swetha. Thank you so much. And I am happy to come on this platform of Clarinet. And greetings to my colleagues from Africa. Actually, uh, the monkeypox, it is endemic in Africa. And I am sure the African doctors will be knowing more of monkeypox than someone from outside Africa. But what uh, brings this topic into prominence outside Africa is, as you must be knowing, in 2022, there was certain, a certain surge simultaneously in many countries outside Africa. So this is a very curious thing which has happened. Such large number of cases outside Africa had never occurred before. So this, uh, for that, uh, we require the inputs from uh, public health work uh, specialists from all over the world, global. In fact, we had about 20, 30 odd cases in India also from where I, I am working. So we had the right from Africa to India. Of course, India, we didn't have very large number of cases. Maximum cases were in the Europe and in the Western Hemisphere. So this is a very, very, very mysterious thing which occurred last couple of years. So we'll be just giving an overview and I am sure my African colleagues will be uh, knowing more about this monkeypox. So this is a overview of the monkeypox and there are a lot of mysteries in monkeypox. Not only the recent mystery, but uh, right from its discovery. It was discovered in 1953, not in its natural habitat, but in a lab. And that too in Denmark, Copenhagen. It was discovered in a lab of Cop uh, in Copenhagen, Denmark, in a monkey. So there are a lot of mysteries in uh, this because the natural reservoir the, is in Africa, Congo and Western Africa. And it was first discovered in a monkey and the title, the name, the classification, the name, naming of the disease is also misleading because the natural habitat are not monkeys, but small mammals, as we will see. So it was discovered in a Copenhagen in a monkey. And that monkey was from Asia, macaque monkey from Asia. So neither was, the monkey was from an endemic area of monkeypox. It wasn't from Africa. It was an Asian monkey. And it was found in a lab in Copenhagen. And how the pox virus entered the monkey is again a mystery. The lab was doing studies on poliomyelitis virus and polio vaccine. So it's uh, again the beginning of monkeypox and it was forgotten after 1953. Everyone forgot about this isolated incidents which occurred in a lab in Copenhagen. It was identified to be related to the orthopox, orthopox viruses which is part of the smallpox virus family and cowpox family. So 1970, again monkeypox came into uh, into light in 1970 during the last phases of smallpox eradication. If you will remember, 1978 we eradicated smallpox and in the 1970s the world was in the last battle against smallpox. And the last battle involved the finding the last case. For that there was all over the world, the WHO team went from house to house survey each village, each house was surveyed for any pox-like disease, any pox-like disease. And since this is also a pox disease, so they could identify people with this rashes which looked like smallpox, but ultimately it was not found to be smallpox. And then they linked up with the 1953 in monkeys, it resembled monkeypox. And then the virological studies, and they found this was a pox virus, but not smallpox virus. 
So in the late 1970s, and it was subsequently the Congo and the Western African belt were the endemic area of the monkeypox virus. And uh, then outside Africa, the first time in 2003, it was identified in USA among some humans. And the source was prairie dogs imported from Africa and other small rodents. Actually, prairie dogs are not big dogs like we know dogs. It, it, they are small rodents. So those who are not familiar with the term outside Africa, prairie dogs are rodents, rat-like things, rat, mouse. So these are type of rodents. Similarly, Gambian rats, rope squir squirrels, these are the supposed to be the natural host. And elephant shrews, again, they are not elephant. They are elephant shrews are again small rodents, all imported from Africa. There were some shipping and import of some animals from Africa into USA. And this was believed to be the source of the infection outside Africa, first time identified in USA in 2003. And it was found that the pox, this monkeypox virus could infect a large number of small rodents and large number of hosts. So still, the epidemiology is not very clear how it is transmitted, how it is. Yeah. Then 2018, similarly 2018 and 19, there were certain cases of monkeypox in Israel, Singapore and UK. And uh, prior to that, human to human transmission was not found, but in the two outside uh, Africa, 2018, some nosocomial infection among the healthcare workers. But reassuring the percent to percent transmission was not very efficient. Only less than 0.3% of the health worker could get the, could transmit the infection to others. So it was not a very contagious that way. And uh, the recovery was also good within two to four weeks. So there were some, and the, Recent biggest mystery was the 2022 largest outbreak outside endemic Africa. Over 10,000 cases from 50 countries to start with. It went up to more than almost a lakh cases, 95,000 cases as per the CDC website just now. Just now I saw about 95,000 cases occurred outside in the Western Hemisphere and I write up to India. Of course, India, we had just a 20 or 27 cases, but 30,000 cases in USA and almost 80, 90,000 cases, 70,000 cases around in Europe, UK and other European countries, almost 50 countries. This was the largest and uh, there are a lot of mysterious uh, things about this, key, how at one time so many countries got in uh, showing monkeypox, as if it has just surfaced, as if it is lying dormant, as its surface. I mean, suppose a disease, a contagious disease, it travels from continent to continent. Like we had the COVID, it started in Wuhan, there was some time, then it went to Thailand, then it went to Italy, then it went to Europe. So there were some trade routes. But this monkeypox, suddenly as if it has just submerged and suddenly it came up. So this uh, serial gaps were not there. So this is one surprising thing about the this recent, most recent uh, global uh, outbreak. And on July 23rd, 2022, WHO declared it a public health emergency of international concern. So it is a lot of mystery, right from the mystery is there, right from the beginning up to the present day. So this is uh, be belongs to the orthopox viruses, as I said, and uh, it is uh, now we have eradicated smallpox and cowpox viruses. We have eradicated smallpox, but cowpox virus is there, but these are very, compared to smallpox, these are very mild, monkeypox, cowpox. And as I said, monkey monkeys are not the natural reservoir. It are the small rodents which are found in Africa. And they did try to identify for monkeys. Very few monkeys could be found to be infected. The epidemiology, as I said, monkeypox itself is a misnomer, belongs to the same family as smallpox orthopox viruses. More common in children in its native Africa is showing a different epidemiology outside this continent. So again, a mystery 
monkeypox. It is not in children outside Africa, but in adults. And we will see a particular type of behavior, particular high risk group, particular co-infections, which increases the which was found in this present course of the illness is two to four weeks, and the mortality rate is. Where, uh, from the data in two years, as I said, there were 95,000 cases outside Africa or globally, including Africa, but uh, majority of the cases was outside the normal foci of the monkeypox. Uh, nine, uh, around 95,000 cases, there were about 184 deaths, which gives an infection fatality rate of 0.19%. Thankfully, it is not a very fatal disease, 0.19%. And there may be some people who had got other, most of the 50% of the cases were already co-infected with HIV. They were in, infected with other sexually transmitted diseases. They were having high-risk behavior. So the mortality directly to monkeypox is almost, we can say, outside Africa. It is a self-limiting disease. Inside Africa, it has varied from uh, place to place, but uh, the mortality inside Africa ranges from zero to 10%. As I said, it affects the children. And uh, let us see, you know, it's a mild and self-limiting uh, case uh, with case fatality rate varying from zero to 10% in Africa, which tends to move towards zero outside, perhaps due to better nutrition and access to healthcare. And smallpox for a mortality was over 30%. So it is nowhere as serious as smallpox. And in Africa, uh, I wouldn't know the reason why the mortality is higher. They say, of course, the Congo virus in Congo, and there's a Western African strain. The Western African uh, strain is milder. So these outbreaks outside Africa has been mostly due to the Western African strains. Congo train is supposed to be more severe and probably, unfortunately, in Asian countries and African countries, children have got a lot of uh, other mal malnourishment, their malnutrition is high, other uh, respiratory infections, diarrhea and other things. Probably that is that. Maybe adding to the higher mortality from monkeypox, wouldn't know because... Uh, these are as uh, in forest and all, they may be handling small rodents, may, viral load may be more. Among household contacts, the secondary attack race was also very less, less than 10%. So it is not a very contagious disease. So these are two reassuring things about the monkeypox. The case fatality rate uh, is uh, right from the large uh, data we have got in the recent, uh, we, it has 0.19%. So that is very reassuring. Secondly, reassuring thing is the secondary attack rate is very less. So the pandemic potential in that way, it should be not much, but uh, the great thing, as I said, the most mysterious thing was how it surfaced simultaneously in many countries. Uh, what can be the reason? So what are the symptoms are just like any viral infection, except for additional like rashes. Rashes are like uh, vesicular rashes and uh, they may have uh, umbilical, like it can be, it has to be differentiated from chickenpox and herpes zoster. In chickenpox, the vesicles are not having a umbilic umbilicus, you know, central depression. Whereas this smallpox and uh, monkeypox, the rashes are having a year. And they may be swollen lymph nodes, rashes, which have to be differentiated from chickenpox and other cases of fever with rashes. Human to human transmission is by very intimate contact, like as, as we will see, while respiratory transmission is possible but not very efficient. So, human to human transmission are by like uh, the way the sexually transmitted disease, uh, it is behaving like outside Africa, it is behaving like a sexually transmitted disease outside Africa. It is among adults with high risk behavior. Uh, intravenous drug users, uh, men having sex with men. So those type of high-risk behavior, co-infection with HIV and STIs. So this is the normal location in Africa. The virus is found uh, mostly among small animals like squirrels and prairie dogs. Most frequently, antibodies are found in Gambian rats and the elephant's roost. The picture on the right, the top one is a prairie dog. You see how small it is. And the lower one is an elephant through. You see it's nowhere near the size of an elephant. It is a size of a rodent. 
The serological and biological studies in 1980s by WH in Africa had detected antibodies in very few monkeys. So monkeys are not uh, the actual, yeah, so that monkeypox is misleading. Most of the human cases, around 75% were among poor children who lived close to animals and handled their carcasses. So this is the natural foci of uh, monkeypox. So these are some of the data we have got. Of course, uh, this is uh, in July 6892 cases in July 2022. By the time it was declared, uh, the pandemic was over or sort of the public health emergency or over. The cumulative cases went up to more than 90,000, as I said. And what are the features? 42% were aged 31 to 40 years of age. So you see, this is a particular age group, a middle age group. And 99.5% were males because most of them were among male gay people. And 10%, only 10% needed hospitalization and very less 0 0.04 needed ICU. And comorbidities, 43% had uh, STDs or 50% had HIV. And it was behaving like a sexually transmitted disease. Another important uh, thing which we, comes to mind is that the smallpox vaccination uh, gave uh, cross protection against the cowpox as well as monkeypox. So the people uh, after 78, after 1980, after 1980, the smallpox was eradicated and vaccination was discontinued. So this may be the cohorts which have missed on the smallpox. That is one, that is one speculation. So maybe it has been lingering or it has just flared up. Other thing that simultaneously so many countries got it rather than one country after the other country as a communicable disease spreads, even if had to spread by it. Maybe that there may be certain uh, immune suppression. Of course, HIV and ST, most of the people had HIV or ST, that itself causes immune suppression. But that thing we are having um, since years. So maybe like we had a pandemic of COVID that caused some immune suppression or the mass vaccination caused some, some reports are coming that immunization or too many boosters. Because if you see the map, if the map, uh, I would, uh, those who are interested can see the map on the CDC website. I just opened it. Otherwise I have put it, put it in my PowerPoint. So I just 10 minutes before that, I saw the map. I saw the it's very interesting map, 2022-2023. If you go to the CDC site, M -pox, monkeypox outbreak global map. So it has given a very good map. And if you see the clustering of cases were in the Western Hemisphere, in the USA, 30,000 plus cases, and the European, and very few clustering. Of course, Africa is a native place, but still less clustering. Very few clustering in India or Asian countries. So most of the clusters of uh, monkeypox outbreaks, the dense clusters, were uh, in the high, most highly vaccinated countries, right, where the vaccination rate was above eighty percent. So that gives you whether uh, it is like we have seen after the uh, vaccination against COVID, the flaring up of herpes zoster and other things. So sub subdued viral, latent viral infections. So these are just hypotheses. Of course, we require to keep an open mind. So we have to consider everything. We have to consider the waning immunity from smallpox. We have to consider the uh, post-COVID, yeah, it may be the COVID virus has uh, primed the uh, year to flare up. We have to, of course, uh, HIV. And of course, there was a social event in Canary Islands. There was a, in Europe, that time there was a gay pride and lot of uh, mixing of uh, men having sex with men and a lot of uh, intimate contact, intimate contact. So these are, of course, some of the social factors and uh, UK, they had done a deeper study. 97 patients were among homosexual or bisexual. 54 had history of sexually transmitted infections. 30, more than 30% had 10 or more sexual partners in the last three months. So multiple sexual partners. So it is behaving like a sexually transmitted disease outside Africa. It is a zoonosis inside Africa. Outside Africa, it is behaving like a sexually transmitted disease. The changing epidemiology of and what can be the future concerns? The cha largest monkeypox outbreak in non-endemic countries. So this is something uh, unusual. 
everything about monkeypox is uh, mysterious right up from the 1958 or 53 when it was discovered in the lab of uh, in copenhagen in 1958 discovery it's a mystery because why why monkeypox would come in a lab because lab they use uh, I, I suppose in 58 also they must be using some uh, protocols to check the infection or cross contamination if they are working on the polio virus why should a monkeypox virus come in a monkey i mean it was a, actually monkeys again are not a natural host so we have got concerns like another concern is the biological warfare we don't know i mean some countries uh, uh, they may be doing some biological uh, experiments uh, because they are uh, though uh, smallpox is eradicated there are concerns that it may be used as a biological weapon and for research purposes the virus is still being maintained in two labs i suppose in one in usa and one in uh, russia so what uh, then there are certain other countries where they are uh, some experiments going on, gain of function research and other things. So we don't know. We should uh, call for a, we should be alert to such unusual happenings. Then the largest uh, monkeypox outbreak in, and, and why now, why it is uh, behaving uh, outside in a different way. And then another concern is that many things about monkeypox is still not known. You see the gap, 1958, it was discovered. There was no study on monkeypox. Why? Because the, it didn't concern the developed countries. It is uh, happening in remote Africa. <clears throat> it wasn't forgotten. After 1958, the monkeypox came to light when they were looking for smallpox cases. So almost a decade went without follow-up. And then also there is silence. Uh, of course, thankfully, it is uh, self-limiting. In uh, But again, children, some children are dying in Africa from monkeypox. Of course, I suppose if you improve the overall health and nutrition, my fatality may come down more. Maybe African doctors working there may be more familiar with what is happening in Africa. The spillover, but what is a concern is that it was declared a public health emergency of international concern. And the spillover of novel monkeypox into new permissive host with cosmopolitan distribution could contribute to a virus becoming health problem in humans. The concern is like if it virus changes because of the host and it mutates, it becomes more transmissible. It may be able to spread faster. <clears throat> and still we don't know because it is very, very adapted to a number of hosts, small rodents particularly. And we have got the international trade and particularly the rodents through the ship and trading have been historically the trigger for many pandemics, particularly plague, you know, plague transmitted by rodents. So this is a concern key, whether this can have a potential for the virus to add up to different hosts, perhaps become more contagious. As on today, there are doesn't seem to be much concern. I mean, uh, much, it is not showing as on today, as it exists today, we don't know. But since the it has been associated with lab in the past, we don't know whether any uh, underground work is going on in other labs in any part, other part of the world with the monkeypox virus. So that we have to be very alert. Monkeypox has existed in the Western world since 2003, when between May and July, outbreak appeared in US for the first time outside Africa. That was no human-to-human -human transmission. It was from an animal source, prairie dogs imported from uh, Africa. In 2018-19, imported to Israel, Singapore, UK, some nosocomial infection took place in UK in healthcare workers, but still it was not of very only 0.33% of the health workers got, uh, who were handling got. But again, one concern is that it can adapt to wide variety of hosts and potential of adaptation and spread. So this is, uh, we don't know what way because it is a very mysterious virus that way and it has become a very mysterious disease and uh, as abruptly as it started, as abruptly it ended also. Within a year, it, it ceased to be 
So we have to, I mean, really, and one lakh cases occurred. And fortunately, death was very less. And uh, total deaths was 184. And uh, most of the deaths were outside Africa, but uh, the overall fatality rate was uh, 0.19. So that is uh, interesting. So these are some of the presentation. Uh, one has to be careful for doctors working outside Africa. The most of the cases outside Africa were atypical. Like left side is the African cases where the rashes are distributed. And if you see, it is umbilicated. The vesicular pustular type of vesicular papular, vesicular papular rashes with a central uh, lobulation or central umbil umbilication. It is spread over the chest, spread over the leg. Here, uh, if you see on the right side, the rashes may be there like this, but most of the cases outside Africa, if a atypical presentation with an occasional rash, this is on the lower lip. It's a rash which has healed and the rash on the genitals. A few rashes on the genitals. Sometimes the gland may be swollen. Sometimes the inflammation of the rectum. And the virus is isolated by PCR or confirmed by PCR. The diagnosis is confirmed by PCR. So there may be atypical presentation outside Africa and the cases may be likely to be missed. Massive super spreader events, as I said, uh, took place. MSSE, massive super spreader events like Gay Pride, Gay Parade, they have a festival, carnival, likely spread by two rape parties between 5 to 15, between 5 to 15 May in 2022. Prolonged intimate contact, concomitant HIV or STDs. Most uh, below 40 years, so no cross protection from smallpox vaccine. Silent human to human transmission is less likely. It's not a very contagious, but after settlement in non endemic areas, mutations may produce strains with epidemic. This, this is, as I said, one of the concerns. So it can be classical presentation not found. I showed you the rashes. Some have only one or two lesions. Rash usually begins in the thighs, external genitals or anus, coinciding with MSM sexual contact. Sometimes does not spread to other parts of the body. In the classical Africa, it, you saw it was sometimes no pox, but only painful ursal or crater. Some have flu-like symptoms, but not always present. Some have swelling inguinal nodes. So take home messages, monkeypox surveillance among high risk population is a must. Nowadays, we have to keep a trace. Uh, Self-limiting disease with almost zero mortality in healthy with access to healthcare in the European era indicates should not be cause for panic or stigma. A good public health infrastructure will serve like a strong army to ward off future threats from emerging and re-emerging diseases without causing panic among policymakers and people leading to knee-jerk reaction and collateral harm. On May 11, 2023, WHO declared that monkeypox is no longer a public health emergency of international concern. So these are the take-home messages, but I think we, uh, particularly Asian countries, African countries, Asian countries, and other countries of the third world should also do research, particularly the African countries should do the research uh, more on mon uh, monkeypox where it is endemic. And uh, the knee-jerk reaction, whenever it spills into the Western hemisphere, uh, people wake up. It should not be like that. You African uh, doctors should uh, take this up and have a good surveillance system. But uh, I have, again, uh, doubts whether uh, the epidemiology is so different in the Western hemisphere, whether other factors may be in play, like reduced immunity or some intervention. So again, it requires a lot of research, but the research in monkeypox have been sporadic. Just uh, it has been a firefighting when there is a year yeah, and then it, there is a silence right from the beginning, 58, and there was a silence of a decade. Then again, there was a silence after WHO identified few cases in the late 70s. And then uh, once it comes to the West, there is a big uh, alarm. And after that, again, uh, so we should have a better research, coordinated research between the West and the other continents. So these are some of my references from where I have taken most of the data. I would, uh, so I think this is all. Thank you so much.
well thank you so much sir for the comprehensive talk the talk was very informative we have received some questions for you sir with all your permission can i show them sir yeah please Yeah, what are the similarities and differences between monkeypox and smallpox? And how does this uh, impact clinical management and public health strategies? That's a good question because most of the present doctors may not have seen a case of smallpox. Because uh, by the time, uh, most of those who are in their 40s and above, by the time they were born, uh, it was eradicated. A smallpox was a very severe disease. I mean, they cannot be compared. Uh, I mean... Smallpox uh, was a, had a mortality rate of more than 30%, 40%. Smallpox, uh, even in the survivors, it left deep marks. Smallpox caused sometimes blindness. This, uh, and smallpox um, was... Uh, the How to differentiate the smallpox rash was uh, all over. It spared the axillary and it, it was very widespread, symmetrical, unlike it, and it went through classic phases. First, there would be a macule, then there would be a papule, and it erupted in a majestic fashion, not suddenly. Whereas this uh, monkeypox rash will be not so symmetrical, it may be unlikated, and it is self limiting. It is self limiting. And uh, definitely the clinical management in uh, smallpox was uh, more difficult with a high mortality. Isolation was very important. Uh, luckily, another important thing was smallpox did not have any extra human reservoir. So there is a vast difference in the epidemiology, whereas monkeypox, the extra human reservoir in rodents is the main, whereas smallpox only affected humans. And uh, you could, the patient is to be very ill, and very severely ill, whereas monkeypox is clinically not that severe. And uh, there is, since smallpox has been eradicated, the need to differentiate between monkeypox and smallpox does not arise. But of course, monkeypox can has to be differentiated from other races like chickenpox. Chickenpox, the umbilical is not there. The vesicle is uh, smooth without any central depression. Whereas monkey pox, smallpox there. And uh, management, of course, uh, monkeypox, the management is uh, symptomatic because there is no, there are some antivirals which you can give. But uh, by and large, it is self-limiting within two to four weeks. And you have to treat secondary infections with antibiotics because they will be coincidental as 40% patients have got uh, sexually transmitted infections. So you have to treat the sexually transmitted infections. Some 50% are HIV positive. So you have to continue the antiretroviral for HIV. And of course, I forgot to tell you about the prevention, uh, the vaccine. The There was, uh, when the outbreak occurred about uh, monkeypox in the European and the uh, USA, they were contemplating to give a smallpox vaccination as a, cro as a, cross, prote as a cross protection against uh, the monkeypox. So it's not uh, indicated because by and large monkeypox is uh, self-limiting and you have to treat uh, other secondary conditions which may be the cause of death. So death rate was 0.19%. So it may be the other conditions you have to treat uh, sexually transmitted co-infections co and HIV. So it doesn't have any specific treatment as such. Clinical management, it doesn't have any. Just, I think... Uh, Okay, what are the challenges and diagnosing management in resource? Any any case of fever with RAS, and particularly the epidemiological epidemiological history. If you know that per, per person is coming from an endemic area, particularly as we saw in the African continent, children uh, playing in the forest or uh, handling the carcasses, there is a fever, there is a RAS. Typical RAS. So clinically, that should be enough to diagnose monkeypox. And since it is self-limiting, the secondary attack rate is also very low, but it is advisable that person may be isolated. And uh, 
address these challenges and individually clinically it does not have much of a challenge because of its good outcome but what is the challenge is to do more research i mean a clinical uh, i wouldn't know how many cases uh, Af my african uh, counterparts are seeing so the pediatrician in africa may be able to know more will be knowing more how the clinical year comes up as i said this is an exotic disease it we are just 20 25 cases but mostly uh, in our we treat chicken pox similarly the pox viruses which are self limiting as an so in resource limiting set, settings pcr and all will not be indicated but uh, for research purposes of course to uh, epidemiological research but clinical management is uh, just uh, the patient's overall general condition and any secondary infection This is, uh, as it uh, as I uh, try to convey in my presentation, the <clears throat> transmission of monkeypox outside Africa is a very intimate contract, just like uh, HIV, hepatitis B, sexually transmitted. By intimate uh, sexual contact, needle exchange, and in the African continent, it is contact with rodents directly. Exactly whether it is transmitted by respiratory route is not very clear as on today. And uh, even if it is transmitted, it is not very efficient uh, mode of transmission of monkey paw respiratory route. So as the present knowledge suggests, it is more by direct intimate contact by the lesions, by the skin or by intimate sexual contact. And uh, for strategies for preventing its spread in healthcare setting, in com uh, first we will com come to communities. Uh, communities is we have to identify the high risk community, like in HIV, risk behavior. So as we have seen from the epidemiological data, 99% cases, 90% cases were among the people who are having unsafe sexual behavior, particularly gay sex or multiple sexual partners. So education of those uh, high-risk people and surveillance of these high-risk people and use of protection, condom use, promote the condom use like we do for other STDs. About healthcare settings, the normal precautions. When you are handling a patient of monkeypox, the normal wearing of gloves, maybe mask also because respiratory infection may be there, but of course. And then the proper hand washing and other things and wearing of gloves. So that is, uh, and uh, as for the outbreak in uh, 2018 in UK, Singapore, there was some spread in healthcare workers, but that was not much. I mean, it did not cause a public health problem, but normal procedures, infection control procedures. That's all. Okay. That is a good question, actually. I, in fact, uh, we have come full circle when I, uh, you see, what happened when the smallpox used to kill large number of people, outbreaks, it used to cause blindness, 30% mortality. Edward Jenner discovered the vaccination against smallpox. What he did, he took a milder virus, that is the cowpox lesion, and he injected the cowpox because the maids, milkmaids were getting cowpox where they were not getting smallpox. So he hypothesized that having infection with cowpox is a milder virus, so it will protect against smallpox. And he created history by discovering the cowpox vaccinia virus and injected and that gave protection against smallpox. Now we have come full circle. When they, as I said, when this... Uh, outbreak was going on in the European and uh, countries and USA, they had stockpiled smallpox uh, vaccines. They have got some reserve smallpox vaccines and they were contemplating to give a modified smallpox vaccine to prevent monkeypox. So I was just thinking that Edward Jenner must be smiling down from the heavens. Ki, look here, now they are using a severe virus to prevent a milder disease. Monkeypox is very mild. So as on today, for a disease with a such low mortality, and this mortality also is in people with a HIV. So, as on today, vaccination is not indicated, but 
future, as I said, we don't know if it becomes more virulent, which again goes against nature because with mutation, uh, the virus also adapts to a, uh, not to kill the host because if the virus kills the host, the virus also that those strains get eliminated by Darwin's law of selection. So I don't think that mutation, though there are concerns, the scientists keep saying it may, I don't think as on today, given the present epidemiology, there is a role of vaccination in uh, preventing monkeypox outbreaks. There is a role of uh, having overall good immunity, like most of the cases are in HIV or in sexually transmitted infections. So if you control HIV, if you control sexually transmitted infections by safe behavior, by needle exchange program and educating the high risk group, monkeypox should not have outbreaks as it has occurred now. And as for the endemic Africa, if you increase the standard of living of those children who are handling the carcasses, if you have a better uh, environmental sanitation, keep away from these small rodents. I think that would be the better control and prevention than going for a vaccine. Thank you so much, sir, for answering all the queries of the doctors. And I would also like to thank all our participating doctors for the continuous participation at our platform. If you want to know more about us, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Thank you once again, sir, for sharing such valuable insights and valuable information to us. So before we conclude the session, any remarks for the African community you want to put across? Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. And as I said, I am sure my African counterparts will be more aware and more experienced in handling monkeypox. And I look forward to more uh, inputs from them and research from them on monkeypox, which is endemic in Africa. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, sir. Once again, so with all your permission, we are concluding the session over here, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you.